They say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Sometimes, the beholder bites off more than they can chew. What can I say? She was incredible. An angel and a devil. Aphrodite and Medusa rolled into one. A woman who knew how to embody everything that a man could possibly desire. And then some. I first met her at a bar downtown. There, she was situated in a nice black leather dress and some high heels. Sitting at a side table. Alone, smoking a cigarette with a beer at the side. She shot a playfully deeper devious glance in my direction. I returned the gesture and made my way over. See anything you like? She asked, grinning. All right, Linda. <laughs> a Halloween fan. She giggled. It's a classic, I said, smiling. One of my favorites. So what are you doing here all by yourself? Usually when a woman comes here, she's either with a guy or with some girlfriends. It's quite rare to see a chick all alone in here, especially an incredibly attractive one. Can a girl just enjoy the town on her own terms? She asked, taking a drag from her cigarette. <laughs> of course, I said with a smile. All right then. Are you new in town? I've never seen you in here before. Mm-hmm. Just got here last week. Ah. How are you liking the place so far? I like it quite a bit, actually. Especially the room. Uh-oh. <laughs> I said. What? She asked. Got ourselves a femme fatale. If you only knew, honey. Oh, I'm sure I have an idea. Do you? Mm-hmm. She smiled and took another drag from her sick. Our eyes locked into each other, getting more and more intense and electric by the second. What do you like about the men here? They know how to treat a lady. And they taste amazing. <laughs> what? You heard me, she said, grinning. <laughs> I guess I'll have to take your word on that for it, then. She grinned again. What made you want to move here? Any particular reason? You, of course. <laughs> I laughed again. Hmm. Just needed a change of scenery, I guess. Then this town makes more sense for what I want to do career-wise. Hmm. Gotcha. What do you do? Not to sound cliche, but... A little bit of everything. Like what? Oh, let's see. I own a clothing brand. I'm a personal trainer. I sing. I produce my own music. I write poetry. I'm an artist. I model. I'm looking to act soon. Well, 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 well. Look at you, Miss Well to Do. <laughs> Thanks, I try. Renaissance one. If you say so. Seriously, you do all that? Yes, it's it's a real pain in the ass to juggle at times, but it's worth it. You must be pretty busy. Very. <laughs> she takes out of the drag. What about you? What's a tall, dark, and handsome stud like you doing on a night out like this? Don't you have wenches to be ravishing? What do you think I'm doing? She smiled, taking another drag. You think that I'm a wench? Or if so, that was a bad thing. Her throat rubs up against my leg. I kind of guy. Is that right? Mm-hmm. You like to dance? She stared at me, smiling. I'll take that as a yes. Love the gentlemen's clubs around here as well. The ladies are amazing. Oh, <laughs> well then. I laughed. What? Is there some unwritten law saying that girls can't have fun as well? I laughed again. <laughs> Not at all. Come on, you know that you can't resist that either. Oh, because it's assumptions now, are we? Not an assumption. More of an observation. 
And how would you be able to observe that? May I ask? Mm. I have my limits. Like what? Your eyes. The way you look at me. You have a deep sexual appreciation of women. I figured that those types of places would be right up your alley. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Hmm. Nothing to be ashamed of. We're sexual beings. It's natural. I smile. You were repressed quite a bit when you were a boy, weren't you? <laughs> okay, now, wait a second. I laughed. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't pick the family that you're born into. Not your fault. Got ourselves a psychic. Oh, no, I'm just really observant. I see. And what else do you see in that crystal ball of yours? Hmm. Dark room. Hot oil massage. Whips, chains, handcuffs. <laughs> I laughed again. Oh boy. <laughs> she grinned, taking another drag. Wanna get out of here? Maybe. He smiled in unison. Her eyes locked further. Not only was there an, an intense attraction, there was a strange sense of comfort and familiarity, like we were safe with each other. I leaned in, and she reciprocated. Nice and long. About 30 seconds. Hot. Passionate. said in a whisper. What do you think? She smiled. We both got up and paid for a towel. Just as we got out, I asked her her name. Kat or Katrina. Whichever you prefer to call me. Okay, I said. Well, glad my name is not Abel. <laughs> we both laughed in this. Gorgeous out tonight. Very, she said warmly. Ah, mistress, the mistress of the dark has a soft spot for a gorgeous autumn night, eh? I am autumn nights, she grinned. Oh, good God almighty, please don't tell me you're a scorp. October 29th, baby. I laughed. What? I have a thing for scorp women. Is that right? Well, allow yourself to deep, dive deep into my underworld stud. I leaned in again. Another journey into bliss for 30 seconds. Incredible. Then, almost out of nowhere, these guys appear, four of them. Katrina and I are surrounded. And just might I ask what you gentlemen want? No words, just evil grins. Two of them pulled out knives. The other two squared up. <sighs> Fellas, you really don't want to be doing this, Katrina warned. Ha! <laughs> Spare me, thundered one of the assailants. Guys, for all of your sakes, I highly suggest that you all leave. Ha! <laughs> Make us bitch! Almost on cue, I swung at one of the armed assailants, knocking him to the ground. One of the others grabbed me from behind. In a headlock attempt. I throw a re reverse headbutt, with some success. Sam and I go to the ground. As him and I struggle, I hear a... I hear screaming. But not the type of screaming that you'd expect. And then... The assailant. They were screaming. At that moment, I felt something warm drip down my back. I was on top of the other guy. It wasn't from him or me. It wasn't from our scuffle. scuffle. Another squirt of warm liquid. When my opponent's face turns pale and he gets a case of the bug eyes. His mouth hangs open. I thought that it could be a trick, but the screams of my would-be assailants had turned into gargled, lay 
fevered struggles for breath to just merely breathe. I put my forearm to my stunned opponent's throat and start to slowly turn my head towards the rest of the scene. A warm liquid squirts into my eyes and the rest of my face, blinding me temporarily. My opponent on the ground screams. I quickly wipe away the liquid. Blood. It's everywhere. All over the sidewalk and the road of the dark alley. Jesus. I gasped. Two of my would-be assailants lie dead on the ground. Their jugulars have been totally ripped out, leaving a heap of open flesh and flowing blood. The third was on the brink of death, violently convulsing on the ground, also bleeding profusely from the throat area. Katrina was nowhere to be found. Jesus! exclaimed my opponent. We disengaged hopped up and began to run off into opposite directions. Then, I just thought of Katrina. Fuck, where was she? One of the knives of the assailants was on the ground, and I grabbed it to defend myself from the would-be threat. Then, off in the distance, I began to hear my former opponent screaming off, begging for mercy, pleading. Then a shrill scream, high-pitched, loud, piercing then a rasp a dial and then silence total silence I freeze for a moment then I hear footsteps in the distance slowly coming toward me I take off running I would never ran so fast I hear a shrill scream almost not human Jesus mutter under my breath. I hear it again. I pick up my pace. I could subtly hear something landing on the road, the sidewalk, even on the sides of the buildings and on the rooftops. God, there's multiple of these things chasing me. Or is it just one? <sighs> even worse. I run into the parking garage. I sprint into my car feeling like my heart is going to pound out of my chest, sweating, breathing heavily. What in God's name was that? I wait a few minutes. I gather myself. Should I contact the police? It was the kn Oh, fuck. I dropped the knife. I've been running so frantically and so fast. I take one last deep breath. Relaxing breathe. I start over the car and begin to pull out. I'm still shaking frantically, hypervigilant, looking for the mysterious assassin. I begin to drive off, make it to a road just outside of the city, a routine route that I take while traveling back to my place. I realize that I'm alone on the road, which is usual for this time of night, but it's usually not this empty. Suddenly something heavy lands on the roof of my car. I shake and slam on the brakes. Something large and black flips off to the side, just outside of the headlights. I speed back up again, going much faster. In my rear view, I can see a set of dark red eyes flowing, following my car, about nine feet off the ground just far enough away to avoid full illumination of the body. Oh my god, this damn thing is following me now. I step on the gas going damn near 80 in a 50 mile an hour zone. Then the eyes disappear. Fuck, where'd it go? I say to myself. A few more miles and I turn into my subdivision. I pull into my subdivision and I up into my driveway. I stumble out of the car and onto my front step, frantically going through the keys. I lock the door. I slam the door behind me. I lock the main and deadbolt. 
I rushed to the gun safe in my bedroom and pulled out a 44 mag. I loaded the weapon and prepared for battle. All of my windows were locked and covered. Same with all of my doors. Just waiting for this thing to burst right in. A few minutes passed by. Nothing. Just cold stillness. Unease. Tension. The building felt as though it's... As, as, as though all of the energy and life had been sucked out of it. A total dead zone. No life. I'm alert. On edge. My senses heightened. After about an hour, a half hour of nervous pacing, I feel the tension release. Everything feels at ease again. The atmosphere is steady again. I go to my bedroom, put my 44 on my nightstand, and begin to doze off. As I block out, I begin to hear the screams and wails of my former assailants again. Blood begins to pour down my walls, through them, down to the floor. Everywhere, blood squirting and splashing. I start to feel sick to my stomach. I hear a rasp, growl. A dark figure with red eyes appears. Jumps out of the darkness, lunging at me. I awake. I awake, but not to what you would expect. I... I can't move. But in a good way. I'm so at ease and so relaxed that I feel like I'm sinking into my bed. Suddenly I hear something land on my roof. <laughs> oh, fuck no. The maneuver is over down to my bedroom window, lightly scratching the glass. I'm letting in, baby. A sensual feminine voice says in my head. Oh, what the? Oh, no. Uh-uh, it can't be. No way. The window slowly opens, but nothing comes. as though someone is massaging me all over my body. Every single inch and in crevice is being pleasured. Then, a mouth and tongue gently caresses my throat. I close my eyes and let out a low, yes. As I run my hand through a woman's head. I slowly regain normal consciousness and realize that it's Katrina. I'm in shock. I blankly stare at her. <sighs> they were about to kill both of us. I did what I had to do. I still sat there. Blank. I know, I know, we're... Different. Katrina, you're on. She nodded somberly. How long have you been? Uh, for as long as I can remember. You were born this way? She nodded somberly again. The fear slowly began to fade away. And pure passion began to reignite. Can I trust you? course, you know you can. We locked up again. Only this time, we didn't separate. She wraps around me like an anaconda, and we begin to levitate off the bed. I let out a half chuckle and a grin. Don't worry. I've got this. We go further and further. Then I take her. After several hours, we both doze off in each other's embrace. I awake in the morning alone in the bed. I get up real quick to check for bite marks or puncture wounds. 
none in sight. Not a single thing. Not a single blemish. Ah, yes, score. I bellow triumphantly. I lay back down on my bed and notice a note written on my nightstand. I told you that you can trust me. Katrina. With her address and phone number underneath. I laugh and shake my head and smile. Ah, what a woman.